In this video, I want to talk about the difficulty of doing exact Bayesian inference in real life applications. So on the left here, we have Bayes' rule. On the left hand side of Bayes' rule, there is the posterior distribution. On the right hand side, we have the likelihood, the prior, and the denominator term, which is also known as the marginal likelihood. The first difficulty that one encounters in doing exact Bayesian inference is that this denominator term is typically very difficult to calculate. Whilst I've spoken about this in other videos, I want to briefly just explain why this is difficult to do in practice now. So if the parameter vector was discrete, then we would calculate P of X by doing a sum. So we would sum over theta of the numerator, P of X given theta, times p of theta. But actually remember that theta typically is a vector. So what this really means is that we're going to be doing a multi-dimensional kind of sum. So we're going to be summing over some parameter theta 1, summing over another parameter theta 2, etc, etc, over some parameter theta k of p of x given theta times p of theta, where these thetas are really vectors of theta 1 through to theta k. So that's the discrete case. In the continuous case, what we would do is we would calculate the denominator term by the continuous analog of a sum, which is an integral. So we would calculate p of x by integrating the numerator. So we'd have p of x given theta times p of theta d theta. In both of these cases, to calculate the denominator, essentially what we're doing is we are marginalizing out the dependence on theta of our joint distribution of x and theta. Because another way of writing this numerator term here is as the joint distribution of x and theta. But remember, in the continuous case, again, theta is typically a vector. So what we're doing is really we're integrating a number of times p of x given theta, where theta is a vector, times p of theta, d theta 1, d theta 2, all the way up to d theta k. Well, what can we say about the difficulty of carrying out each of these calculations? Well, in the discrete case, if k is a particularly big number, then that means we've got a lot of parameters that we're summing over, then there may be an extremely large number of terms that we need to evaluate. And that large number of terms may just be entirely infeasible for a computer to evaluate. To see that, imagine that each of the parameters are discretized in 10 particular values. Then for k separate thetas, that would mean we need to make 10 to the k calculations to calculate the denominator term. That may be fine if k is sort of 5, 6, maybe seven, but if k is a hundred or if k is a thousand, in other words, you have a thousand parameters in your model, then it's entirely impractical. You just can't do the calculation. In the continuous case, usually there just isn't an analytic form that exists for these multidimensional integrals. And so we have to approximate them in some way. One of the ways in which you might think to approximate these integrals is by discretizing the posterior, which we'll talk about next. But suffice to say that when we discretize the posterior, we run into the same sort of problems that we ran into when we were trying to work out the denominator for the discrete case. There are just too many terms that we need to evaluate. So in summary, we see that the calculation of the denominator term is difficult because of the high dimensionality of the data. However, there is also a compounding difficulty with evaluating each of these terms, which is that there is also a kind of a highly pathological nature to the actual thing that we're summing or integrating over. And that's that typically the prior, if we use a fairly diffuse prior, is existing over quite a large space. In other words, it's got support for a large range of values. But the likelihood is usually very, very concentrated. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that in practice, a tiny fraction of parameter space actually contributes to either this sum or this integral. And that pathological nature of the prior and the likelihood here 
actually compounds difficulty to try and evaluate each of these terms. So let's imagine that we actually could calculate the denominator term. Are we then free of all of our troubles? Well, typically in Bayesian inference, one of the things that we do want to calculate are measures that summarize the posterior. The most common posterior measure that we calculate or we'd like to calculate is the expected value of some parameter, let's call it theta i, conditional on the data. How do we calculate that for the discrete case? For the discrete case, we work this out by summing over theta 1, summing over theta 2, etc, etc, summing over theta k. Then we need to weight the posterior distribution by theta i. So we have theta i times p of theta. Remember, theta is a vector conditional on the data x. So again, for the discrete case, we're having to do a sum which will involve many, many terms. And so we're going to run into exactly the same difficulty, namely that of the high dimensionality of the space, as we ran into when we were trying to work out the denominator term. OK, how do we work out the expectation of theta i given x for the continuous case? Well, if we had a continuous parameter vector, then essentially all we do is we do the continuous analog of all of these sums, which is integrating, and we integrate theta i times p of theta conditional on x, and we have to integrate with respect to theta 1, theta 2, all the way up to theta k, in other words, all of our parameter dimensions. So again, we're having to do a multidimensional integral, which, as I spoke about before, is difficult to calculate in practice. And what we usually do is we seek some method to approximate that. One of the methods of approximating is discretizing, which runs into exactly the same problems as the multidimensional sum did. Perhaps these two expressions on the left here, which we need to evaluate to work out the posterior mean, aren't quite as pathological as working out the denominator term. They're less pathological because typically the posterior is less concentrated than the likelihood, which means that actually we don't have necessarily such a tiny area of parameter space which actually contributes to the expectation of theta. But nonetheless, the high dimensionality, either summing in the discrete case or integrating in the continuous case, mean that these expressions are difficult slash impossible to work out exactly in practice. So the issues with high dimensionality that we're running into is an example of what is known as the curse of dimensionality, which basically means that as the, in this case, the, the dimension of our parameter space increases, then the difficulty of working out the terms exactly increases exponentially. Whenever anything is increasing exponentially in terms of its difficulty, that's something to be very wary of because exponential scaling in difficulty means that even if we have a relatively few number of dimensions, we're still in a lot of trouble. So in summary, the difficulty of doing Bayesian inference in practice or exact Bayesian inference in practice comes about due to the multidimensionality of our parameter vector. And the difficulty of having a multidimensional parameter vector is that when we want to manipulate probability distributions to calculate quantities of interest, then that requires us to be able to do a multidimensional sum or a multidimensional integral. And both of these two things are impractical to do on a computer for problems of just modest parameter dimensions. 